Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL Part 14, Interactive Graphics Programs. In the last video, we added some new functionality to our input class. Previously, the input class could only tell us when the program was closed. But now, thanks to some of the built-in functionality from the Pygame library, we can now use the input class to figure out which keys are down, pressed, or just released. With that functionality, we're now going to make it so we can move objects around the screen, perhaps by using the arrow keys. So, to begin, let's go ahead and open up our development environment. I'm still using Sublime Text. And since this is video number 14, I'll go ahead and create a new file in the base directory. And I'll save this file, giving it the name test14.py. All right, so the functionality in this is going to be pretty standard. I'm going to start off with a bunch of import statements. All right, so from, start off with from core.base. We always extend the base class. So we'll import base with a capital B. Then from core.opengluTils, we'll import the OpenGLUtils class. Next, from core.attribute, we will import the attribute class. From core.uniform, we'll import the uniform class. From OpenGL.gl, we'll import well, everything. All right, and the goal of this program is going to be to move a triangle around the screen. Move a triangle around the screen, let's say with the arrow keys. All right, so as always, I'm creating a class called test, which extends the base class, and I have two functions to set up. First, initialize. As always, I'll print a message just so I know everything starts okay. And next, I'm going to set up my vertex shader and fragment shader code. And so, vertex shader code, multi line string, so using triple quotation marks. So, I'm going to get data from a vertex buffer, so that's an in variable in VEC3 position. And I'll use a uniform. Uh, VEC3 call translation to move it around the screen. Uh, void main. Now what do we need to do here? Well, first I'm going to add the position to the translation and then assign the result to GL position. So I'll make a new VEC3 called pause, which is uh, the original position plus whatever is stored in the translation. And then gl underscore position will be a vec4 containing pause.x, pause.y, pause.z, and 1.0. All right, there's our vertex shader. Uh, for the fragment shader, I'm not really focusing on the colors this time. I'm really just focusing on the movement. So I won't use, in this case, uh, some kind of uniform for the color. Uh, but I will create an out vec4 uh, for fragment color. And then in void main, I want to assign frag color to be, let's see, uh, vec4. And again, I'll just make it maybe a yellow color. That seems to contrast well. That's going to be the end of our fragment shader. All right, I need to go ahead and save that. Program ref. I'm going to go ahead and from the OpenGL utils class, I want to initialize the program, which contains this vertex shader code and this fragment shader code. All 
right. Also, uh, let's see, I'll set the, I'll leave the color of the background as black. I do need to create a vertex array object. And so I'll call that a VAO ref. I really only have the one, so I don't really need to save it to a class variable here. GL gen vertex arrays, uh, just generating one of those. And then GL bind vertex array uh, to whatever that reference was. All right. Next, I want to go ahead and set up my attribute, which is going to be the position. So let's see, I'll start off by creating an array called position data. Let's see, the positions here are going to be 0 0.0, 0 0.2, 0 0.0 for the first vertex. Second vertex will be 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2, 0 0.0. Third vertex will be negative 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2, 0 0.0. Yeah, I'll go ahead and line that up. All right, there's my position data. I need to go ahead and create an attribute with it. So position attribute will be a new attribute. The type of data specified with a string vec3 and then give that position data. And once I've got the attribute set up, I need to create the association between the vertex buffer and the shader variable. We have a function for that. Position attribute dot associate variable. Now this is in self dot program ref. And I'm looking for the variable called position. All right, I also need to figure out the vertex count. It's three. But as always, I like to write it as the length of the list. Cool. I've got one uniform that I need to set up as well. And so the uniform is translation. Uh, so I'll call this self.translation uniform. It's going to be a new uniform object. It's of type vec3, and the initial value, I'll just set it to 0, 0, 0. So initially, the triangle will just be in the center of the screen. I move that up so you can actually see it. Okay, very good. So we've got a uniform. I'm going to go ahead and locate where that is in the program. Just like with attributes, we need to set up the association. We're also going to do a location for this. So self.translationUniform uh, dot locate variable. I'm going to locate it in self.programRef. And uh, we're associating this to the variable named translation. All right. I'm a really big fan of kind of the parallel structure here, right? So we have kind of the two different things, right? We've got uh, the attribute. And again, in this program, we have to find out what it corresponds to. And similarly for the uniform in this program, we have to find the location. All right. Um, next thing we want to do, make that a little bit smaller so you can see it all at once. Uh, we've got the uniform set up, and let's see, we're going to move this thing around the screen a little bit. So let's now create the update function. I'm going to go in a layer of indentation, then I'll define update. So first I'll start with GL use program. We're going to use self.programRef. Then I want to clear the screen. Whenever anything's moving around, we always have to clear the screen. Let's see, so we'll say gl clear. gl underscore color underscore buffer underscore bit. 
And then we want to go ahead and, well, in this case, we're really interested in if you push one of the arrow keys, which we can now check with the input class, uh, then we're going to change the values in this uniform, then send that updated uniform data to the shader, and yeah. Um, let's start by figuring out how much we want to add to each of these variables. So um, amount to move the triangle. I'll create a variable called distance for now. And remember, by default, uh, the window goes from negative 1 to positive 1 on each of the axes. And if this runs at 60 times a second, we don't want a very large amount of movement per frame. So maybe I'll say 0 0.01 for the distance. Again, storing it in a variable will make it easier to change later. And then uh, we'll do a bunch of if statements. So if self.input.isKeyPressed, then I need to give it the names of the different keys. So for example, if you're pressing the left arrow key, then I'll say self.TheTranslationUniform uh, within that, we have some data that's stored. And since we're moving the x-coordinate, uh, this is going to be part 0 of that vector, the, the 0 with index. And we're going to subtract from that this distance amount. Now to make this go by a little bit quicker, I'm going to go ahead and copy-paste that a few times. And let's change each one of these. Uh, if you're pressing the right arrow key, I'm going to change that minus to a plus. And if you're pressing right in the x coordinate, we want to increase the value. Now let's see if we're moving up. Let's do down first. Uh, if we're moving down, we're changing the y component, which has index 1. Again, we're subtracting to go down. Remember in OpenGL the y-axis positive points up. Finally, uh, if we want to well move up, once again we're changing the y component and we want to add. And so very similar, just in each one of these commands we've changed the name of the key. We've changed, uh, are we changing x or y? So we've changed that index and we're either subtracting or adding. So three little details really important to pay attention to. Now, once that's done, we need to go ahead and upload the data from the uniform back up to the GPU. So let's go ahead and do that next. Uh, let's see, this is gonna be self.translationUniform. Uh, let's go ahead and upload that data. And then we should just be able to do a draw arrays. And so let's do GL draw arrays. And I want to go ahead and draw this as a filled in triangle. So GL underscore triangles, zero, and self dot vertex count. All right. Um, that should be it for the input, uh, for, sorry, for the update function. Let's go ahead and uh, at the very uh, leftmost level of indentation, uh, we're going to go ahead and create an instance of this program and run it. So test dot run. All right. Uh, hopefully we got everything okay. I think everything looks fine. Let's go ahead and build. All right. So what happened here? It's always fun. If so, oh, I forgot my colons. At the end of the condition statements, you need colons. Okay, so let's go ahead and try running that again with proper Python syntax. Tools, let's build again. So we should see a window with a yellow triangle. Fantastic. And so if I go ahead and push up, moves up. If I push down, it moves down, left and right. That's exactly what I wanted. 
You can even push combinations of keys to get it to move in diagonal directions. Excellent. And if you push left and right at the same time, see, nothing's happening, and that's as it should be. Left and right are canceling each other out. I'm always a fan of using just if statements rather than else if statements, because I don't want one of those keys to override the other. And so, very good. All right, and that's how we're going to make interactive graphics programs using that new functionality in the input class and typically changing values of uniforms. All right. Thanks for watching.